Hey, welcome back everybody to Caleb the Video Maker 2. In this video, we are going to be doing some refactoring of our SignalR app. So, what is refactoring? Refactoring essentially is changing the way our code is for our application without changing the way the app works. For what benefit though? Essentially, we want to organize our code a little better, reduce bugs, make it more maintainable, more readability, etc. But we want the app to work exactly the same. So just to start off, let's look one more time at our app to see what we got. So I'll give the page a refresh. Pops up with connected and we, we got some console logging saying it worked. That's essentially all we got. <laughs> Pretty simple app, I know. But we're going to refactor it and make it a little bit more maintainable. So looking at our code here, let's try to find some things we can change that make our code better. Well, the first thing I see is that we have this code right here that all we're doing is writing to the page. And anytime I want to write to the page, I'm going to have to take this code and put it somewhere else. So like, for example, I could write to the page here. But the issue is, if, if I ever need to go and change the way that code is, or maybe I change the ID of the div there, well, now I'm going to have to change it in two places or more. So whenever you have the same code twice, let that be a message to you that you should try to extract that code into its own function. So we want to extract this, create a function, and then call that function. The easiest way to do that is just create a variable and assign a function to it. So we could say write to page and set that equal to a function. And then inside of these brackets, we want to take this code, oops, this code, put it in there. So now we have a function that's going to do that. And instead of using this code, all we have to do is say the function name. So within here, we could say write to page, put parentheses. Great, okay, there's an error. What's wrong? I think I accidentally deleted my uh, brackets there. There we go. <laughs> okay, so is this going to work? Let's try it out. I don't think it's going to work. Eh, message is not defined. Ha, ah, you just got pwned. What does that mean? Well, what we're adding to the page is this message here. And if you remember me talking about that scope, um, this message is a parameter on this function. After this function ends, the browser doesn't know what the heck message is, okay? You're just, you're just wasting your time. Because you can see the brackets open here and end here. Anytime we're outside of this function, message basically doesn't exist. We need to set message as a parameter and accept it through arguments when we call that function. So here we need to go message. And then up here we need to say message. So now we're kind of making this hopping thing. <laughs> We call this function, we pass in a message, we write that message to the page, and that, that gives it to the function down here, so now it's assigned to this variable, and we append it to the page. If you want to see that a little bit more clearly, we could change the names of these things. So, message1, message1, message2 message two, just so you can clearly see how this works. Message one, in this example, it's assigned to message two. And then message two is rebroadcasted to the page. But we don't need those names for now, so let's just delete those. Will this work? I don't know, let's give it a try. Success! Sweet. Great. <laughs> We're getting somewhere. Now just to show you how beneficial this can be, if I ever want to write to the page, I can just call this write to page function. And I have the perfect example of where we might want to do that, up here in this console log. Generally, console logs and alerts are considered unprofessional and annoying and usually just something you use in development. So in a production environment, you want to try to do something else. So we're going to replace this with writing it to the page. All you gotta do is say write to page. Sweet, now we save it, refresh. Great, 
So now we actually get the error message on the page. Much more helpful. Let's go back to our code. Also, let's do the same thing for the alert here because same thing with alerts. You can actually turn alerts off if you keep bugging the person enough times. With alerts, there'll be an option to disable alerts. So alerts are like a big no-no. Don't ever use them in production. No, no, just don't. <laughs> There we go. Now, if for any reason SignalR doesn't work, we don't get an alert. We have the error put on the screen, which is much better. So what else can we do here? Well, there's something else I noticed. Uh, Connection.myHub is here once, and Connection.myHub is here another time. And generally, when you do something multiple times, sometimes it's helpful, helpful to kind of break that off into its own little thing. So what I'm going to do is up here is create a variable, name it my hub and set it equal to that little f section. So dollar sign dot connection dot my hub. Now anywhere we have dollar sign dot connection dot my hub, we can just replace it with my hub. Also make sure you don't delete this line because this is actually different. It's just connection dot hub. That's just to make your signal R connection. That's not working with any specific hub. So be careful with that. We want to delete this here and this here. Great. Let's see if everything still works. Go back to the browser, refresh. Seems to be working great. And the benefit is that our code is much easier to read, much easier to maintain, less prone to error and bugs. It's just overall better. So as we go on, if I find that we need to refactor some more, I will see how we can do that the best way and hopefully make our app even better. So that's all I got for you this video, guys. Hopefully it was helpful. I will see you in the next video, and it's going to be great. So I'm excited.